Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem today. And today's problem is number of one bits and it is an easy level problem. So the problem statement is very straightforward and simple. They say that you have been given a positive integer n and we have to count the number of set bits. So this is a very, very, very basic question of bit manipulation. If you see the constraints, uh, the value of n is up to 10 to the power 9. So that means it is a 32 bit integer, right? So what you can essentially do is you can check all the 32 bits or I'll also tell you an interesting method to solve this particular problem. And that is, uh, that is a method not very different, but it can be quite commonly used in bit manipulation, right? So let us see the approach. So at max, I'll have 32 bits, right? So if I have 32 bits, the bits will be numbered from 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on up to 31, right? So uh, like each of these bits will be some bits will be 1, some bits will be 0, right? And so on up to like this place. So how do I check which of them are set and count them, right? One way of solving this is if you are allowed to change the number, as in this case, we do not care about the number itself. So we can just change the number. We can just check if the rightmost bit is 1, right? So how do we check if the rightmost bit is 1? We can take the bitwise AND. So for example, it is any number like this, right? If we take the bitwise AND of this number with 1 only, only 1, right? You will see that all the remaining bits will become 0 automatically because of these zeros. And the last bit will depend on this particular bit. So if the last bit was set, the result will be 1. Otherwise, the result will be 0. Right. So that means if you take the bitwise and bitwise, bitwise and of any number with 1, the result can be either 0 or 1. 0 denotes that the least significant bit of the number, original number was 0 and 1 denotes that it was set or it was 1. Right. Now I know how to find the rightmost bit. Now for the remaining number, what I can do is if I know the rightmost bit, what is the rightmost bit? I can right shift the remaining number. So if I had this number originally, so it was 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So now I know about this particular bit. Now if I don't care about the original number, I can just right shift the whole number. So it will become 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. This will be the final product. Now I can again check the rightmost bit and again shift it 1 plus to the right. So it will become 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right. And I can keep on doing this until the number becomes 0. Right. So this is the idea when you can change the number and we don't and when we don't care what is the final number. But let's say uh, we want to preserve the original number. So one way of doing this is performing the life shift but not on the original number. So in this case we were doing let's say we were doing n is equals to n right shift 1. Right. And then we were calculating all the things. We will not do this. Instead we will run a loop from 0 to 32 because this is a 32 bit integer. Right. And in each step we will check n right shift i right and take its and with 1 right so if this value is 1 that means the ith bit is set if this value is 0 that means the ith bit is not set or 0 right so this is one way of doing it now you can at each step either you can do this particular thing at each step right shift the current number by 1 and in this case you will lose the original number but if you want to preserve it you can do this particular method right now the other way of solving this is one very interesting way so let's say you have a number like this, right? So lots of zeros are there. There are only two bits set, but still you will have to go through all the bits, right? Because the last set bit is this one. But now we can like optimize this further. Although the total number of operations in that case would be 32 only at maximum, but we can further optimize it. What we can do is uh, if we have this particular value and you will realize if we take its bitwise and with n minus one. If this is the original value, if you try to calculate n minus 1, it will look something like this. Right. So what happens when we do n minus 1? If we have a value n and we try to find out the binary value of n minus 1, you will observe the last set bit. That is the rightmost set bit becomes 0 and all the bits after it become 1. Right. So if this is the case, you will see that these two bits are different and all the other bits are also different. So all of these bits, if we do the bitwise and of these two values, all of those bits will become zero. So effectively what happened, the rightmost bit was removed from our value of n. So again, if you can change the value of n or if you are allowed to change the value of n, 
what you can do is if the value of n is greater than 0 that means you have at least one set bit right so you can do y right now you can increment your answer and now in the next line what you can do is you can set the value of n as n and n minus 1 what this operation will do is this will remove the rightmost set bit from n so if there were only two bits this file loop will run only two times right and then each time you can increment your answer right so this was the last approach that i wanted to discuss and this is the method that can be used and uh, it just saves you some of the constant time operations that's it and this is just a nice clean trick to find the answer so let us have a look at the code i have implemented the last approach what i have done is i have initialized my answer at zero and while n and while n means while n is greater than zero i'll increment my answer and i'll update my n as n and n minus one and i'll just return my answer so let me just submit this code So you see that it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments as your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that's it for today. I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.